Oh, she's heavy. Hey guys, welcome to Frame Chasers. Basic video today. We're just gonna do an unboxing, tear down, and I'm gonna change over the pace to some cryonaut. Let's rip her open, shall we? The uh I remember the paste on the 3080 XC3 was really bad out of the box. It was like crusty and dry. And oh. I think the packaging might be back to the way it was before. Huh. All right. Good job. I mean, uh, if you guys remember my uh, 3080 XC3 unboxing, what just came with that plastic thing, this is how they used to package it. This is way better. Uh, if, 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 if like a, a piano or something heavy dropped on the other 3080, it would have broken for sure. This is much better. All right. Ugh. Holy balls. Jesus. So, the reason I got this card is because beggars can't be choosers. Get whatever you can. And my only requirement for a 3080 was three 8 pins. Holy shit. Dude. I, uh... Oh, my 3080 is in there right now. I can't use it for scale, but holy shit. Now I know why this model was so expensive. This is a this is a chonker. This is a thick boy. So let's see what the uh I mean everyone's probably wondering what the capacitor situation is here. Looks like their product page is accurate. Four 220 microfarad uh SP caps and then two banks of the MLCC caps. Uh I'm going to assume that they're probably 22 microfarad, the small ones. I doubt they would put 47 on there, but my 3080 never... Oh, come on, man. Look at this. Can we not have the clown lipstick EVGA? God damn, man. I probably won't even shunt mod this until I get a replacement because the, the, the clown lips are killing me. But the worst, worst decision EVGA could have done. But... This one is going to be going into the wife's rig because I want two HDMI ports on mine. And the only models that have that are the Strix and the Gigabyte Extreme and Master, I believe. But you can't get those yet, so we're going to be reviewing this for now. Once I'm done with it, throw it in the wife's rig and then I'll, I'll wait for a Strix for myself. Uh... Yeah, SLI bridge, three eight pins. I'm going to... I'm going to quickly... Th oh man, there's another red lip over here. It's like double clown lips. I'm going to go throw this upstairs and do some thermal testing before I tear it down and repaste it. Just because I want to know. I, I got like a good 10 degree... um, A 10 degree benefit switching the cryo on the 3080. I want to see if it's the same on this one. So I'll be back in a sec. Also, the whole capacitor thing got blown way out of proportion. The the reason why I'm so hard on whiners is look look at look what happened now. All the vendors are delaying more cards now. So all the salty pieces of shit whined that they didn't get cards, so they latched onto this capacitor thing, making fun of all the people that had early cards, and now all the vendors are retooling all their cards, and now nobody gets cards. That's why you don't whine, people. Stop whining. Anyway, rant over. Okay, so, did a few preliminary runs here. I got some notes written down. So, right out of the box, 1080p fire strike. The automatic fan speeds kept the GPU temperature around 70 Celsius. Uh, boosted up to 1900 megahertz, 1.07 volts. So, uh... 450 watt power limit as well. Um, even at 450 watts for this model, it's severely power limited. It's insane. This thing will easily draw 800 once shot. Like, I like, <laughs> just wait. Um, Times Pi Extreme 4K settled at 75 Celsius, 
1800 megahertz um and the fan speed was about 45 percent so they definitely they definitely preferenced quiet over thermals for this model um it runs fine out of the box you you literally can't hear the fans at all it's 100 percent silent for me anyway like this thing at 50 50 percent fan speed you cannot hear it all right well next let's let's tear down the chonker all right, let's tear her down and see what adventures we may find. Uh, hopefully this one is as easy as the XC3. That one was pretty damn easy. Uh, it looks pretty much the same. Seems like they used the same template for all these. Okay, except for that one. I hate these washer ones, like, uh, like the plague. Okay. And we got our warranty Ward void sticker. Damn, this one has a, a BIOS flash switch. Well, well, it was on normal mode for those notes. Well, okay, whatever. I'm not going to go back now. I didn't, I didn't even know there was a BIOS switch on this one. Oh well, I will, I, when I finish the Cryonaut, I will go retest it with both modes to see if, uh, I thought 450 watts was kind of a low power limit, but maybe the OC switch will increase the power limit some. We'll find out after. I'll go back and test it again. Uh, this one's got a washer behind it. I mean, uh, a nut. Lots of nuts on this one. And... Vo warranty void sticker come out come out wherever you are come on come on EVGA stop putting these damn stickers on you know better you know you're a good company you know you'll warranty this for people just just don't do it just just don't be that guy right that company uh this one This is interesting. This one, this one has a nut in it. Check this out. This one actually has a nut right here. But I don't know how you would get at that to tighten it down later. But for now, can just use something like this to get it out. That's silly. All right. For real? Oh, it's down here, sorry. Okay, all right, and it just dropped into the fan somewhere. All right, that's fantastic. Okay, back plate should be off. I think my cat just farted, really stinks. Kitty, she definitely farted, holy shit. Um, what do we got here? Oh, it's coming, she's coming. Oh my god, I might have to open the window. Oh my god. What do we got here? So... What is this? Some kind of, um... Where does this even go? It's like a, it's like a copper... It's like a flattened copper heat pipe that goes across the back of the PCB. But here, here are the memory modules here. Um... So where does this go? It doesn't even it doesn't even attach to anything. Yeah, it literally the copper pipe just goes over here but doesn't attach to anything. It doesn't even attach to uh, attaches it attaches to the center. Oh, you can see the groove here where it attaches right here. So the the copper pipe attaches here and one end over here. That's silly. Huh. All right, well, whatever. It would almost be better to add a thermal pad going across here on the PCB yourself so it, it sucks it up. Um, that's kind of disappointing. I, I heard there was a copper pipe, but this is kind of shitty. All right, well, whatever. Um, on to the next part. So thermal pads look good. Final four screws here should be these ones. Okay. 
Okay. You always want to take this part, especially these ones with the four corners, the pressure seated ones. You want to loosen them in diagonal order slowly. You don't want to put pressure on one side of the PCB more than the other side. That is not, not what you want to do here. And last one. Nice. Nice and safe. Okay. That looks like it's it. Flip her over. This is kind of the sketchiest part because... Oh, there's actually cables here. There's so many thermal pads on the inside that... Um, you don't want to just like reef on the PCB, like you know what I mean? You have to actually kind of wiggle it. I think I said this in the last one. Just a little bit. So it's loose here, slowly coming here. The middle is the worst part here on the, P on the actual, uh, yeah, okay, I am going to wiggle this for about 20 minutes and I'll be back just to make sure it's safe. I'm not gonna rush it. Okay, I got it just enough to show you guys. I, I kind of grabbed it. I grabbed it under the PCI Express bracket here and I started wiggling it from the center and she is slowly letting me get inside of her. There we go. Okay. Gotta do these three cables here. And just like the XC3, they're color coded. Thank you, EVGA. One, two, three. And there is probably one more, yes. Down here. Okay. Uh, let's see what we got going on here. Okay. Um, what do we got here? This looks like a fan header over here. That's kind of nice. Uh, J, oh, an RGB header as well. Why would you want a fan header and an RGB header on a card? I mean, you could actually, I guess, um, I guess with the fan header, you can control all your case fans with um, the PWM from the card. That'd be pretty sweet. Then you could use Afterburner to control your fan curve. That'd be handy. Um, same thing on the chokes here. This is this thermal foam stuff. I don't like this. I'm gonna replace this with pads. I don't like this stuff. And the core, the die here. Yeah, same thing as the 3080. It is really dried on. It, yeah, yeah, see how it's, yeah, it's actually cracking off. I, I know they said that production of these things was starting in August, but I don't know what kind of thermal paste they're using here. This stuff is hard and crusty, but uh, uh, yeah. All right, give me a sec. So we got all 12 memory modules populated here. Obviously both sides of the PCB in the same spot. Um, we got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two, twenty-two chokes. Uh, well, twenty-three actually. I'm not sure if this is even a choke. I think it is. How many shunts we got here? One, two, three, four, five. So these five are the same as the thirty-eight. They just kind of moved over. We got one shunt here. This has got to be the PCI Express one. I don't see any other ones. Oh, there's another one over here. Look at that. Six, seven. Seven shunts on this one. Right, because there's an extra PCI, or there's an extra eight pin. That ex that explains the extra shunt. Um, you got any small ones like the 3080? Nope. Oh yeah, one here, one two so these are the same three yeah three of the smaller shunts as well all right so not too much different from the xc3 more power stages and a hell of a lot more filtering capacitors over the whole board like uh, there's a there's a lot more uh sp caps around the memory modules on this one i noticed which is nice 
Yeah, uh, that's pretty much it. I'm going to... I'm not going to shunt mod it today. Uh, this is my wife's card, so I'm going to leave it as is and do an undervolt on it for now. Until the water blocks come out. And then I'll do a shunt mod when I get a water block for it. Because this, this thing is already running at 60C at 100% fan speed. But we'll see how the cryonaut works out on this. Uh, yeah, I'm going to clean this all up and uh, get the uh, foam off. And then we're going to do a cryonaut application here. Also, there are a hell of a lot more phases on this PCB than there was on the XC3. Like, there's a lot more phases here, which is a good... I mean, obviously, there's three 8 pins, and it's a 450-watt out-of-the-box TDP, right? One more thing I need to mention here. If you are taking this apart, make sure that you have 2 millimeter thermal pads on hand to replace this foam shit that they use because if you take the cooler off and there's all that foam there and you put it back the foam isn't gonna sit the same way that it did out of the factory so you might have air bubbles you might have gaps in your chokes and shit just just get thermal pads and replace and like yeah like maybe that's why they do it so if you take it apart they can tell that you actually took it apart or something i don't know i don't know why they're using foam or it's just maybe faster on the assembly line to use foam. But yeah, if you're taking it apart, get, get yourself some thermal pads ahead of time to replace the foam and get all that shit off. Okay, so we're pretty much done here. I replaced the foam with two millimeter thick thermal pads, same as the uh, XC3. Polished this all up. Put a really thin layer of cryonaut over the die. Uh, the cooler squeeze really hard on the die, so you'd like, uh, like, you don't need much at all. You just a very thin layer. If you can cover it, you're done. Let the cooler do the rest of the work. Um, that's pretty much it. Uh, let me put this all back together and I'll see you guys on the, uh, th the flip side. Actually, you know what? If I'll do this on camera just in case somebody wants to see it because last time I didn't and somebody was like, dude, I want to see you put it back together. So, okay. So, I angle the board like this, angle the cooler like this. This this RGB header goes in first cuz it's the shortest one. Then you line up the cooler. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Oh yeah, okay. So uh make sure the cord goes in the slot in the cooler so you can drag it down. That was my bad. So then you line up the holes on the end of the PCB first, like so. Make sure nothing's in the way. And we close. And we, oh, wait, something's jamming it. And we close, what's going on here? There we go, it was the fan header again. Okay, so we're closing it, we're, we're and then as you close it, Make sure the whole the uh, the screw holes all line up together. That's the whole the whole plan here. Flip and move it over just a bit. Screw these in. Done. Okay. Mistake. Before you put it back together, you always want to check the thickness of the pads that you just put in. So I'm not sure if you can see this pad here is really thick and this one over here the stock one isn't touching anymore even if i apply force as if i'm screwing it down the pad is too thick so i gotta go back and replace these ones with one millimeter thick pads don't use two millimeter thick it's not the same as the xc3 uh so we gotta take it all apart again yeah so two millimeters is too thick for this one it even with me pushing on it it didn't even touch the die so you know, always double check your work. It's not like we're measuring these things with engineering equipment or anything. I'm going to cut out, I'm going to cut out new one millimeter thick pads for the, uh, the chokes here. I'll be back. Actually, wait, I better show you this part too. So you put this on, however the hell it came here. And just like you took it off, you have to go in diagonal like this. So you don't put too much pressure on one side of the card. Okay, that one's in a little bit. Next one. 
in a little bit. You can you can do these three fan headers uh, last. They, they, there's enough give on these ones that you can plug them in after. And last but not least. Okay, now that they're all in just a little bit, you can tighten them all down in, in uh, diagonal sequence here. Little bit. Just a little bit. I say, wiggle it. And nice and snug. These ones, you pretty much can't over tighten it unless you're an idiot. Like, the screw will stop going when it's hand tight and then you know you're done. Like, like yeah, like, I, like that's done. That's it. You can leave it alone now. Okay. Next thing I'm going to do, I already cut up these thermal pads, so I might as well use them for these copper pipes over here. I'm going to... I'm going to see how they fit, and then I'm going to be back and explain. Yeah, all right, so I measured this out. You're going to want to use 2 millimeter for the back plate if you do decide to do this. I have no idea if this will make a difference or not, but it can't hurt. And you see how I left a little bit of copper sticking out here? This These parts attach to the uh, GDDR6 module, so you have to leave... You can actually see the shadow of where the... Uh, the memory thermal pads go. But anyway, let's finish this up and put it together. So you kind of line it up like this, line the holes up, done. And screw it all in and let's go check this thing out. Okay, so ran some more tests. Time Spy Extreme with 100% fan speed. It was still 60C, so that didn't make a difference. Also the, uh, the, um, uh, the dual BIOS switch didn't do shit. Uh, normal mode and OC mode. They're both 450 watt power limits. Um, the Time Spy and Fire Strike scores were the exact same. Literally nothing changed. Like the the it doesn't it doesn't do anything. It, like nothing happens. I, I, I this was also with the latest driver, which is supposed to fix the boost algorithm a little bit. So it's definitely not as spiky as like the 3080 was before, but maybe that's why the switch isn't doing anything now. Maybe the driver is just overriding all the switches and all the settings now to make it so it doesn't crash anymore, right? Maybe. I don't know. I didn't test it before the driver, uh, the new driver, but the switch itself doesn't do shit. Leave it alone. So I, I, <laughs> I guess that's it for this one. If you buy this model... Just don't touch it. It's fine. Uh, the, the Even the thermal pads on the back didn't really improve the memory temperatures at all. But the ICX sensors, I don't know if those are sensing the back ones or not. They might just be the front ones. I will be doing rear memory testing with a thermocouple at a later video. But yeah, it, this card is built Perfectly fine out of the box. No problems. Except for the power limit though. It These things need like 600 watt power limits. Like it's it's insane. So later today when this video goes live. It's Tuesday afternoon in the Pacific time. I'll head over to Twitch on a stream. And then we'll play around with some undervolting. And see what this thing can really do under some stress and some load. Join up if you want to join in or get some benchmarks going. Uh, if you want to help me out, build some charts, come on over to Twitch, and we'll get some numbers out of this 3090. So far, it's looking like, though, that a 3080 shunt modded is the sweet spot, it looks like. Because these are still way too power limited to pull away from a 3080. Um, even at 450 watts, it's only clocking to, like, 1850 so, there's a good 300 megahertz of headroom here with a power mod, which would then let it pull away by another 10% or so. But a 3080 with a power mod or a shunt mod is, is the best value right now, I think, by far. Best value. Actually, the, the best value is a 2080 Ti shunt modded, oddly enough. That's, you get 11 gigs of RAM, performs the same as a 3080. And it's cheaper. It's very strange release, this one. Very strange. Even though the 3090 is the only upgrade, 
unless you power mod it, you're only getting a 10% upgrade over the 2080 Ti. 20%. So it's like... $1,500, and you have to... $1,800, and you have to power mod it to get the most out of it. But we'll wait and see if there's unlocked BIOS limits eventually. I'm sure there will be. Yeah, it really sucks that even a Further Wind 3 is still so bottlenecked by power that you have to ruin your $1,800 warranty to stretch its legs out. It is what it is for now. Just enjoy your card, and then we'll see what the future holds for power limits. One last thing I wanted to say, though. This 8 nanometer node is legit trash. Like, it... Yeah. Like, I need to get my hands on a... On a, a Titan Volta, so I can check the TSMC 80 SM scaling. But... Yeah, this 8 nanometer, like, AMD has a really good chance to take this one. Like, they, like, NVIDIA screwed this up. Like, this is, this card runs way too hot, way too much power, not enough performance, not even close. Like, yeah, out of the box. When, when, when we pump 800 watts into it, then, then I, I mean, oh, man. Anyway, guys, that's it for this one. Thanks for joining me. Um... Uh, do all that YouTube SEO stuff for me. Like, share, subscribe. Uh, the the YouTube channel is really starting to steam uh, snowball, I guess, right now. So let's keep that train going. Uh, it's awesome. I got like 200 subs in the last video alone. I'm stoked. This is awesome. I hope you guys are finding the content just in general very useful. That's kind of what we're here for anyway. Get as much performance as possible so you can teabag. I'm not going to show the teabag. For you Overwatch players, just make sure you use this power that I have given you to teabag those mercies. You know what I'm talking about. If you want more live action 3090 stuff, see you guys tonight on Twitch. Other than that, talk to you later.